Let's think of concrete. And let's consider the case of a structure where we have a column, slab, right? Another column here, another slab, etc. Oops. So we want to know what the strength of concrete is. Why do we want to know that? We want to know that because we have to know that to be able to design the structure that is made of concrete. Now, remember that every time we think of strength, there is a failure definition behind that. So, for example, if we're looking at this column here, particularly, let's say, at this point, in the middle of the column, and we're considering the strength of the concrete at that point, we need to imagine what the failure is going to be like. So how is this column going to fail? One way it can fail is that the compressive stress here is so large that you have fractures. Okay, so let's say that the failure is a rupture or a fracture of the concrete. Okay, so essentially what we're saying is that the strength of concrete is associated to the condition where the concrete fractures. So that's our link between the failure and the strength. So how do we determine strength of concrete for the case where we define failure as a fracture? Well, we do this test, and you've probably all seen it. We take a concrete cylinder, we place it on a platen, then we place a platen on top, with a load cell here, and we push at a given displacement rate. Okay, so let's call it at a given velocity. So a machine called a low frame pushes on the load cell, the load cell pushes on the concrete cylinder, this is fixed, the concrete cylinder deforms delta, the initial height is h initial, right? And during the process of the load frame pressing on the cylinder, we measure the force with which the cylinder is resisting. Meaning, we measure the force inside the load cell as the load frame is pushing on the concrete cylinder. And then what we do is we plot the force versus the displacement. That is the most raw or rawest way to plot the data. Generally it goes like this. There's a peak. At that point the concrete breaks, the cylinder breaks, and there's a drop in resistance or force measured by the load cell. Because this is in pieces, all cracked up. Okay? Now, we said that a way to plot the data, that is the rawest way, is to plot the force versus the displacement, or com the, the, the formation of the cylinder, right? Now, what we're going to do, really, to define the strength, is to plot the stress, which is the force over the cross-sectional area of the cylinder, that's called the normal stress, acting on the horizontal plane versus the strain and the strain is delta over HI so you know the area you know the initial height right and so basically you convert this plot to this one that peak is the maximum stress now, remember we said that, if I turn this around, remember we said that at this point here, where the, where the force drops, that is the point where the concrete breaks. That is a fracture point. That is a failure point. So this here, if we were to figure out what force this is, that would be the force at failure. 
which would be a measure of the strength. We could call that the strength. That is a force that acts on the, on the concrete cylinder at failure, meaning that's a strength. But we would like to define it in a different way. We would like to define it as a stress. And that's why we have this condition, this type of plotting here. Okay? This is what we generally call F sub C prime, the compressive or compression strength of concrete. Okay, so for concrete, in compression, meaning that the failure expected is a fracture or rupture of the concrete, the accepted strength parameter is F sub C prime, which is a normal stress, it's a sigma. It is the compressive stress at failure. And failure is defined as fracture or rupture. Okay? Now I'll show you something interesting that will lead us to the strength of soil later on. Let's go back to the fact that when we test concrete in this form, we choose to take a cylinder and compress it in the lab. When we take a a model element, like a cylinder. When we take this to the lab and test it, we are essentially representing a point using that cylinder. So the cylinder that you test in the lab doesn't represent a column in the structure. It represents a point inside the column. That's why lab testing of this type is sometimes called element testing. Why element? Because a point is denoted by us, humanoids, as an element, right? We put stresses on it, etc. So this element in the lab looks like a cylinder. So a point is an element, an element is a cylinder, they're all the same. Okay? So look at this. Let's do the following. Let's take the cylinder, we're going to draw it here. Here we're going to draw the stress versus strain curve. And over here, we're going to draw the more circle associated with what this element is feeling <clears throat> during the test. So notice that, again, we're calling this cylinder an element, and that element is a point. They're all the same. Okay. So, we begin the test by essentially having the cylinder there sitting on the platen. There's no load, so imagine that this arrow is not here. At that point, what does the stress-strain curve look like? Well, it looks like a point at the origin. There's no stress, there's no deformation. Remember that the strain is a deformation over the initial height. So the strain is zero, the stress is zero, there's nothing going on, it's just a cylinder sitting there on a platen. So, if this is an element, what are the stresses on this element? Zero and zero. So, 0 and 0. The more circle is a point at the origin. Then we begin increasing, <coughs> sorry, we begin increasing the stress on the cylinder by, by imposing the deformation of the cylinder with a load frame. The load frame just keeps on moving, pressing the cylinder, and the load cell that is sitting here tells us what is the force with which um, the cylinder is reacting, right? So, let's say that the load frame starts moving, start, it starts to compress the cylinder, so now the curve looks like this. It reaches this point at that moment, right? So, 
the stress vertical vertical stress here acting is sigma let's call it a and the strain is strain a okay that is the vertical stress acting on the cylinder at that moment in time where the load uh, where the stress strain diagram looks like this what does the more circle look like the more circle looks like this on the vertical plane the horizontal stress is zero because there's just air here there's nothing going on on this in in the radial direction right lateral direction so zero comma zero in the on the sorry on the horizontal plane we have that stress sigma a right and because this is a principal stress and this is a principal stress meaning that this plane and this plane are principal our point is here sigma a comma zero so now we have a more circle that actually has a diameter I'm just gonna draw the top part top half so at this point what do we have we have the situation where this element or point or cylinder is being pressed more in the vertical direction than in the horizontal direction of course when we have a difference in principal stresses 0 and sigma a then we actually have a circle and we have shear you see that because the circle has a diameter that is not 0 there are, there are shear stresses acting on different plates in here see you see the more circle you see tau is not zero so in all other planes that is in all planes other than the vertical and the horizontal there are shear stresses acting so now we have imposed shear inside the cylinder okay we keep going let's say that we have this situation right we continue loading and we get to the point where we have the fracture and the loss of resistance this right here is f sub c prime right so at this moment this stress here is f sub c prime this one is zero and this specimen or concrete cylinder or element or point has suffered fracture now if you have run a, 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 a test like this you realize that generally you have a fracture that looks like this two cones this one and this one and this one this part falls off like that generally okay now what does the more circle look like for the element when it looks like this at that moment at the failure moment well what is the vertical stress acting on the horizontal plane f sub c prime what is the horizontal stress acting on the vertical plane zero so now the more circle is bigger right this is called the more circle at failure because it describes the stress conditions in the element or cylinder when it is failing okay there are two things that we can see here the first is that the element sorry the more circle is bigger than for example in mid midway through the test it is in fact the biggest it can be it cannot be bigger because if it were bigger then this stress would be larger than f sub c prime and by definition the stress cannot be larger than f sub c prime if, the, if f sub c prime is the largest stress that the material can take clearly right it's the strength it's what we had defined before as a strength right so the more circle is the largest second thing which is really related to the first is that now on all planes except the vertical and the horizontal there are very large shear stresses okay now look at this if you look at the actual element 
you'll see that the fractures occur on planes that are more or less 45 degrees from the horizontal. If the cylinder were uh, as tall as it is wide, then you would have exactly um, or very very close to uh, the fracture, the failure planes, basically the fracture planes, would be very close to 45 degrees. The thing is that we have to make the concrete cylinder taller than it is wide because of um, boundary effects with the apparatus that we use to test the, uh, the, the cylinder. So, but, uh, this ang this, uh, the angles of these failure planes on which the fracture actually occurs is around 45 degrees. Okay, from the are, are around 45 degrees. Clearly, there are two. And if they are 45 degrees, they are normal to each other. Okay? So, it would be uh, more pure, let's say, to define the strength of the material as the stress on the failure plane. At failure, not the stress on the horizontal plane at failure, which is what f sub c prime is, but the stress on the actual failure plane at failure. That would be more pure. Now, if you if you if you under, if you um, let's say analyze the fractures, you realize that what actually causes the fracture is shear. So instead of just saying that strength is the stress on the failure plane at failure, we should say it's the shear stress on the failure plane at failure. <clears throat> so look, let's play around with the Mohr circle. Let me move this up a little bit. Let's play around with the Mohr circle. The element looks like this. Here's F sub C prime, here's zero. Let's figure out what is the shear stress on the failure plane at failure. The failure plane is 45 degrees, right? Let me move it like this. 45 degrees from the horizontal. So what we can do is we can say, okay, here's our element, our cylinder, same thing. We shade this part, rotate it 45 degrees counterclockwise. We'd like to know what this tau is, because that tau is the shear stress on the failure plane at failure. If the, the vertical stress acting here is F sub C prime, right? Because at that point, that's what we call failure. So, what is this tau? Let's go to the more circle. We have our element that looks like this, right? So we can draw a line from the point that describes what's happening on the, vert on the horizontal plane to the point that describes what's happening on the vertical plane, that one, that line. We rotated the element 45 degrees counterclockwise to align it with the failure plane, right? So we are going to rotate this line twice, 90 degrees. That's the point, right? This point becomes that one, or this phase becomes this phase, that phase becomes that phase, or that point becomes that point, you know about that. That is the tau on the failure plane at failure. Now, is that surprising? No. Well, what is it that it's not surprising? The fact that it's the maximum tau. It is the maximum. At failure, the maximum shear stress occurs on this plane. The other maximum occurs on that plane. And therefore, that is why the cylinder breaks along those planes, because along those planes, the tau is the largest. So, the failure of a concrete cylinder is not a compressive failure. Compressive stress is imposed, but the failure is a shear failure. 
and the failure occurs along those planes. Because the, on those planes, at failure, the tau is the maximum. On other planes, the taus are smaller. That's why on those planes, there's no failure. The failure occurs where the tau is maximum. So, geotechnical engineers would look at this type of problem and would say the following. They would say, look, the strength of concrete is this tau that we found, which ends up being f sub c prime divided by 2. Look, it's the radius of the circle, not the diameter. Right? The structural engineers have made it uh, more convenient for them just to work out problems, and they've said, look, these are the geos. The structural engineers say, look, the strength of concrete is the principal stress, normal stress, at failure. Okay, now, what I'm trying to say here is, of course, that, you know, I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm not saying this is better. I'm saying this is more pure because this, the failure is a shear failure. It's not a compressive failure. It's a shear failure. You can see it. These are shear planes on which the tau is maximum. And that's why the failure occurs where it does. Okay? So we'll, you'll see that uh, later that when we talk about soil, we'll use this type of definition. The strength of soil is a shear stress, is a tau. Whereas the definition for structural engineers for concrete is that the strength is the principal stress. This is a sigma at failure. Okay, so next we move on to soil.